You're listening to Real Crime, the Movie Sleuth Podcast. What's up, everybody? Good Hello. evening. How are we doing tonight? Pretty good. Yeah? Are we ready? Ready. I'm ready as ever? Ready. Awesome. Well, this is episode 113 Jeez. of Real Crime. We've been doing this for a while now. Kind of crazy. Kind of yeah. crazy, crazy. I haven't been on in a while either. No, you haven't been on in a while. Like, I don't even think we were in the hundreds last time I was on here. No, I think you were on a few ago. I'm pretty yeah, sure. you were on with me with a couple of the uh, Stephen King ones. Oh, and I that's think right. My first one was like 10-something. Oh, okay. Cool. 104, maybe? Yeah, yeah the Stephen somewhere King around there. was the last one I was on. Yeah. yeah, so it's been a little bit. Mm-hmm. I think that was like around episode 108, 109, because oh, okay. we skipped quite a few weeks, too. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. um, all right, so let's jump right into it. Uh, first thing we want to mention is our sponsors, as usual, Sellerman's. Have you been there yet, Michelle? I've been to Sellerman's before. Yeah, the yeah. place is great. So, and I and I get their stuff even like if I'm not like actually physically go there, like I drink their stuff. Yeah, Dana gets their uh, their pineapple stuff quite a bit yeah, too. Yeah, it's good. So, yeah, it's really good. I love the raspberry. I can't remember what the name of it is though, but Rasgar, I think. I still need to get there every week. I'm I'm tempted. Yeah, by what I hear. Yeah. Well, we'll just all have to go as a group one of these days. I'd love to. Yeah. Yeah. Just kind of do the party thing. Um, and then, of course, Flint Institute of Arts. Great place. Lots of cool stuff there all the time. <laughs> yeah. Somewhere else I need to go. That's, that's you know, a little far from me. But, I mean, it's I'm always looking for fun stuff to do. Yeah, and... yeah. Man, we're all so low energy tonight. We need to wake up. <laughs> um, I usually drink a coffee before I come on here. Yeah. And then I didn't. You know, I... I was out. So. I usually don't. You drink a coffee, and I did, so I think I'm kind of like, I'm either coming down of caffeine high, or I'm, <laughs> I'm going to like jump on one in the middle of it and start talking a mile a minute, so we'll yeah. see. <laughs> and then, of course, projectorscreen.com, great website for lots of home theater stuff, so definitely make sure to check them out, too. So, in news this week, Scott's not here to say that I got beat up. So, but you did. But I did. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long few days of a lot of uh, Star Wars news. Um, and today there was an announcement on MTV News, an interview with Kathleen Kennedy of Lucasfilm announcing that they are working on Knights of the Old Republic, which is... Is pretty big news for Star Wars fans Mm -hmm. because for years a lot of us have wanted to see some other adaptation of that other than the video game. Yeah, the you know what's funny is the only Star Wars game I've ever played and liked was the Knights of the Old Republic. I liked that one and the second one. I thought they were really good. Like I really liked the lore in it and stuff. I was like, man, why isn't Star Wars normally like all this stuff? And And that's what a lot of people are saying right now. Like this is the Star Wars we've wanted instead of what you've been giving us for so long. Are they based on books or something, or what um, is that? You know, I'm not really sure on that. To be honest with you, I'm not really sure. So, but the the story in it was really good. I think there was a comic book. Oh, okay. I think there was a book. I'm trying to remember right now. I could be totally wrong, but I, I thought there was a book that was connected to it. So the other Star Wars news, obviously, was the trailer dropped over the weekend, which was like the biggest shit of the year, Mm -hmm. other than Avengers Endgame. People were kind of freaking out over the return of the Emperor. So that's going to be pretty cool. They're like, we got to pull something out of the hat to get these fans back in. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) They're all salty after Last Jedi. Throw them a Palpatine. We hate you. We hate you. (laughs) But yeah, so they had the Emperor laugh at the end of the trailer. People were kind of aroused by that so (laughs) that'll be pretty exciting to see how they twist that so all right and then moving on uh mark millar has a new comic book coming out a new science fiction comic book female based called space bandits and it's actually like Mm -hmm. he's working in uh partnership with netflix on it so i'm imagining they may do an animated series of this also so kind of cool um just a little bit of different news not remake or reboot news for once and then the minecraft movie is trucking along is that going to be a real thing yeah yeah it got pushed back again though is it going to be all blacky looking like yeah i think so (laughs) 
<laughs> I think so. Yeah. So um, they just pushed it back to 2022 from 2021. Wow. So it could be slightly less like, you know, <laughs> like the <laughs> Minecraft wagon has passed like five years ago. Right. So now I guess this one year is going to help it out and it's going to be a little bit less not relevant than... <laughs> <laughs> my kids still play Minecraft. I mean, I know a lot of people play it, but like, I feel like, you know, the, re- the you know, the time period to really jump mm-hmm. on the Minecraft yeah, movie making yeah. thing has passed. But you know, maybe it'll win Oscar. I don't know. I'll be proven wrong. <laughs> Minecraft <laughs> wins an Oscar. <laughs> oh my goodness! Is Fortnite the movie? <laughs> Fortnite coming out. <laughs> oh, Fortnite! <laughs> I just I'm gonna keep saying that over and over again now. <laughs> Fart knife, my a favorite. lot of people on the internet call it fork knife. Yeah, fork knife. Mm-hmm. That's like the why? Just because it's the internet and they're random. Because they're idiots. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's about it for news this week. Really, not much going on in releases this week. Penguins, the new Disney documentary, is coming out. Also, the Conjuring Universe movie, The Curse of La Llorona. Yeah. Do you ever like see those like? ads for it all the time it's like curse of la la that yeah. little deep voice guy i don't know why it's funny to me like i see that shit <laughs> so often because i watch a lot of youtube and i'm like oh god it's this curse chicken yeah game. lots of conjuring stuff coming up mm-hmm. a lot and then uh last but not least this week one that we saw at south by southwest over a year ago mm-hmm. fast color yeah is being released this week in theaters it took a while for it that it did one. i thought i was like is this ever going to get picked up because it's yeah, really it's kinda good crazy Took them a while. I love that movie, though. Yeah. You know, and I think it's it's cool because it's kind of low-key, but it's also a superhero movie uh, featuring, you know, black women. And it was directed by a woman. So I think it'll be like a kind of like refreshing change of pace, like, you know, with all these big bombastic movies coming out. It's kind of like a more of like a character piece. That's cool. Yeah, well, it was actually, it was it was like way, I had, I had like had no idea what it was about when we saw it at South by Southwest, and I was like, wow, this is like fantastic. Mm-hmm. And then I just never heard anything else about it, like mm-hmm. after it got shown. Um, I think when we saw it, uh, we said it was like the best X-Men movie we had seen. Yeah, it's like, it, it's like a the best X-Men movie that's not X-Men. Like it's, yeah. But it's totally that kind of like vibe, but it's like indie, like an indie X-Men movie with black women in it and they didn't really like overdo it with the visual effects either no yeah it's like it's really like, very it's tapered understated and, but yeah it was yeah, really good yeah. i hope i hope it gets a little bit of traction out there hopefully it does i think it'll probably do better on like streaming home yeah video stuff over yeah. time i wouldn't be surprised if i thought they maybe they'd release it like on demand or something at the same time but i guess it's going to get a little bit of a a theatrical run yeah so um suggested viewings this week i haven't really had time to watch much but i did on uh friday night i spent some time watching the new netflix series black summer mm-hmm. which is a prequel series to z nation okay. which i've never seen but people say it's better than the walking dead um so i started watching black summer i got about four or five episodes into it they're not too long they're like 35 to 40 minutes long each and every every episode just cuts right into the next one yeah. and it's really good very and it's a prequel so it doesn't matter that you didn't see yeah exactly um very very tense uh really good a lot of good action in it and a lot of gore so i'm gonna suggest that you watch that and i think that kyle's actually doing a write-up on the first season too so. yeah he really likes z nation too yeah yeah he's like a big fan of that so michelle what's your suggested viewing this week um you know i also didn't watch a whole lot of stuff because i was trying to catch up on game of thrones which i did after after using every spare moment of my life to watch <laughs> it um i watched a movie tonight that was pretty wild it's a uh, like an old trash movie from 1991 called The Suckling. Yeah, I saw your post about that. <laughs> it is about uh, a couple that ha- <laughs> they want to go get an abortion. So they go to like a back alley abortion clinic. But the clinic is also it's like a combination abortion clinic and also like a brothel. So, you know, two, <laughs> killing sense. two birds with one stone, yeah. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> So, but so it, obviously this movie is like 100% like just trashy sleaze. So they go to this uh, abor- back alley abortion clinic and she gets an abortion and they flush her 
uh, aborted fetus down the toilet and then it goes into the sewer and then like sewer ooze like the ninja turtle ooze like drops onto the fetus and then it turns into like a monster fetus and then it tries to kill everybody in the abortion clinic and it like has like a big umbilical cord that swings around and chokes people with and it like can throw placenta attacks like (laughs) it could throw the placenta (laughs) out and it like locks and it and it seals up all the doors in the abortion clinic with placenta. And if you like touch the placenta, it like melts your face. <laughs> Dude, I was like, what in the hell? <laughs> so this is a pro-choice, pro- pro-life movie. I don't I know. It. I'm like, is this what, is this like Republicans <laughs> think happens in abortion clinics? Like, <laughs> I, I don't know. I want to see this. It was like, it sounds fun. It's so trashy. And just like, like, if you explain the premise to somebody, they're like, yeah, I'm out. But it's I'm, oddly, I'm in. yeah, it's really? oddly the best movie about an aborted fetus monster I've ever seen. Yeah, like, it, and the guy and the <laughs> effects were like super legit on the mm-hmm. fucking fetus. Like, it's like they spent, they obviously spent all the money on like the the fetus costume, and then like everything else is like four dollars. Like, so, but uh, Vinegar Syndrome just released a restored Blu-ray 2K scan of it, so it's like the best that movie's ever looked. If you really care about that movie looking good. But um, it's a really nice release, though. So if you if you want to watch it for the first time, that's like a perfect way to watch it. If you want to experience uh, the suckling and it all its glory. Can't forget that name either. <laughs> yeah. Sounds exciting. <laughs> so that was my Tuesday night. Baby want to suckle? I'm gonna put that, that's on my watch list. That sounds good. It was pretty fun, actually. Even All if it's right. bad, I probably would still enjoy watching it. Yeah, that sounds yeah. I mean, it's not good. It's just entertaining. It definitely. I would not say that movie is good, but it's definitely worth a watch. Like, have like a couple beers first, <laughs> or you know, a little or something. You know, yeah. Like. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's just funny. Like, Endgame has like officially like the entire movie has leaked now. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So, well, at least that's what I'm seeing, that the entire movie has leaked online. That sucks. I'm that not, means the spoilers are going to be all over the place. Yeah, I'm not. I'm just staying away. Just, I'm not doing it. You just got to make it till Tuesday. That's all we got to make it till Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday, just, 1 o'clock. The poor people who bid, like, thousands of dollars on eBay for, for yeah, their tickets. tickets. <laughs> There's Our, going to be some uh, cases open against some people. Oh, yeah. For yeah. non-payment. Yeah, For sure. I, you know what though? Like they were talking about it last night on a lot of forums, like Reddit and shit. It's not going to affect the box office. Oh yeah, no, at all, no. because most people will want to see it. You still want to the see something like that in the yeah. big screen? Yeah. And well, the percentage and sound of people that pirate like isn't as high as people would think. Like it has, there's like kind of like the uh, an entry of like I have to figure out how to download stuff and you know and and use BitTorrent site and, and right, not BitTorrent right. site, but like you know, it's it there's like a little bit of like you have to know how to use computers to, you know, pirate stuff. And it's probably like I'd say like four or five percent of the people that watch movies like mm-hmm. are good at pirating. You know, yeah. So, the majority of the people are just gonna be like, "I'll just go see it in the movies." Mm. Like, why would you want to watch a shitty cam of it anyway? I know. There, I know. I mean, not that I ever pirate, but if you do pirate, it's best to do it after the Blu-ray comes out. Just saying, so it's gonna be all shitty cams with some guy <laughs> walking in front of it, eating his popcorn all and loud and shit. Yeah. <laughs> How'd they even? What? Where has I, it been shown? I know it was shown like in India or something. Oh, okay. And it's believed that they got it from oh, there. That somebody. Like, Got it for her. Huh. Wow. Yeah. All right, Mara, what's your suggested viewing this week? Okay, I'm going a little different this week. Okay. Um, I'm suggesting a serial podcast called Under Observation. It's independently made by my friends from Sundown Pictures. Uh, it's about a girl who finds out that essentially her parents are not her biological parents. She gets a letter in the mail. It's kind of hinting that she's adopted and... um. She goes on a very intense, intriguing journey to find out just exactly where she's from. And it's a thriller. It's about like six episodes. Yeah. And I think the episodes are about like 10, 15 minutes a piece. And, That's not bad. Uh, it's the first season. It's it's really fun. Oh, and I'm, I also acted in it too. So oh, I'm, I'm, plugging, uh, I'm plugging myself a little bit. Right. That's okay. No, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I mean... Not only because I was in it, it's really good. Um, I hope we get to do a second season because yeah. it ends on a cliffhanger and 
it's it's really fun. It's Where do you guys record it at? Uh, well, we recorded it in their in their basement. Cool. So, it's on Stitch, iTunes, a couple of other of them. If you look up Under Observation, cool. I've never like listened to story podcasts, so it's like a it's just like in the old days, like on the radio, you had serial yeah. stuff. Yeah, and they even did like you know. Uh, we did like the sound effects and everything and like there was a point where like someone was like running away and so like you know we would like run away and come back so it would yeah. sound like you know we were doing everything it, it was definitely oh that's cool it was fun to do and then it was like really fun to like experience the story like mm-hmm. as i was doing it and then like hearing it all put together like episodically it's it's kind of intriguing the whole editing process and putting all the yeah. the sounds and effects and stuff in there. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So the, I mean, she did a really good job. Who uh, Lauren, who directed it and wrote it, and um, it's just go out and listen to it. It's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds fun. This is fun. Yeah. <laughs> this is fun too. Sometimes. All right. <laughs> <clears throat> so what are we talking about tonight, Michelle? Uh oh, us the movie <laughs> us. Oh, we should preface this with anybody that's watching this right now or listening to it later. There's going to be yeah. numerous spoilers for us, and I would assume Get Out because you you know he's only directed two movies. So yeah, I, I haven't seen Get Out. You uh, haven't seen Get Out? No, I was you know I I wanted to before tonight just yeah. in case, but I didn't get a chance to. Well, I'll try not to spoil Get Out yeah. then if you haven't seen it. I'm just saying it, it, it would it might come up because it's just the yeah. other movie he made. So people, a lot of people have been comparing us to Get Out and how they differ and how they're... Yeah, that's why I wanted to watch it, just to see. Because, I mean, I've seen Key and Peele, and yeah. I feel like it definitely compares to a lot of stuff on that show. Yeah. But... Get Out and Us are two totally different things. A lot of people went into Us thinking yeah. that they were going to be thematically similar and they're really not. I don't know why people thought that because it's just it's a whole different movie. Yeah, he's only had two movies. He doesn't have enough to be really like yeah. a tour kind of a mm-hmm. thing going. Mm-hmm. I mean, he does now because he has more than one. But yeah, just he changes it up each yeah. time, which is good. Mm-hmm. You know, um, Get Out I think was more like straight laced thriller type horror, where this is a little out there. Yeah, a little more outlandish, mm-hmm. I would say. So. What do we want to talk about first? Well, what'd you think of it? What did you think of us? I I loved it. I loved it. I thought it was I mean, my my like base guttural reaction is like it's probably one of the scariest movies I've ever seen. I don't typically like when I see a horror movie, it doesn't typically like stick with me and like freak me out and make me feel weird. But I was like scared the rest of the day. And like even the next morning, I woke up and like I was I was home alone. Mike was at work already, and I got out of bed and and you know everything was like drawn, all the blinds were drawn and everything, and like I <laughs> didn't want to open it because I thought I'm gonna see those people in the red jumpsuits, <laughs> yeah, yeah. like just milling around and trying mm-hmm. to do their hands across America thing. Yeah, I just felt like ugh, creepy. There and was a very strong sense of impending doom yeah. throughout the entire movie. Mm-hmm. Throughout the entire movie. And you just really didn't know what exactly was going to happen. No. But I did kind of figure out that twist that was coming pretty early on. Yeah, I figured it out about halfway through. And then I was like, well, we'll see if that's what he does with it. Yeah, I, my husband did. And he said, he whispered to me. He was like, I think I figured it out. I'll let you know at the end. And I, was like, <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm like terrified right now. I, I There's nothing for, like, I couldn't, I wasn't even thinking about figuring anything out. Yeah. Right, like, right. That first scene at the carnival through the, the little, you know, the whole setup scene, I guess, was really scary to me. It was like really scary. Yeah, it was a fantastic setup. Like just everything about it, the way it was filmed, like mm-hmm. the pacing of it was perfect. Like the imagery just everything about it i was like wow i was just just and then it it's just a great setup and then the music that kicks in mm-hmm. is like so fantastic like the guy that did the music for this one did the music for get out and he's like really uh, he has a lot of uh variety like in his styles like he can do like like in get out it was more like this i want to say almost like this southern gothic style of a score mm-hmm. and in this one it was it sounded a little bit more like you know 
I don't know, like an old 70s horror movie score, yeah. like with the singing and the stuff like that. So he's got a lot of range, I guess. Yeah, I lo- the score stood out to me. I really enjoyed it. And like the soundtrack, too. Yeah. Like the pop, the use of pop music was mm-hmm. obviously like spot on. I just, I when me and you went to the screening of it, I just remember like that opening scene when, well, not the opening scene, but when they're first at the boardwalk on like, holy shit, it's the same boardwalk from The Lost Boys. Yep. Oh, I didn't mm-hmm. notice that. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. Shot at the exact same location. And I was like, oh, that's really cool. That's a neat throwback. There's, yeah. you know? And you know what? There are so many just little like throwbacks and homages that like mm-hmm. are really subtle and that like just like hours later and even the next day I was like thinking about stuff being like oh, that was kind of like that like even from like uh in the first scene where she's watching TV and it's in the 80s the they show the Goonies mm-hmm. they have Chud I don't know what else was there yeah because there was like stuff strewn about the room I can't remember what else was there but they both seem to kind of like relate to the story a little bit yeah yeah, yeah. I need to see this again because I, I only too. I only saw it the the one time, yeah. and I've been meaning to go see it again. I just haven't had a chance yet. I want to see it knowing the twist. To I do see too. If like that changes anything, which I'm sure it does, because but I think what I like about Jordan Peele is like he's kind of like our age, sort of like how old is he? Like he's I think he's like in his mid forties. Yeah, think he's just turned forty. Yeah, we just looked because okay. that's what I thought too. Uh, Cause so his his influences are like more contemporary, like more more people would recognize, you know, the stuff that he is, you know, using as homage. And then I kind of get annoyed online with people that try to call him out for using influences and homage when every director does it. Mm. They just don't they just don't know the references they're using because they're yeah. more right. obscure. Yeah. yeah, like if you watch, like I watched Climax by Gaspar Noé and he has a whole scene where like he has he's inter- he's interviewing like these dancers and it's on a CRT television and right next to the television he literally has books and movies stacked and he said I just put all my favorite movies and, and influences and yeah, books there of course because every director has influences and and you know like I guess people get on Quentin Tarantino's case for it too but I feel like they try to undermine Peel by saying, oh, he just made, you know, Get Out was just Stepford Wives, and this is just the mirror uh, episode from, you know, uh, The Twilight Zone, when, like, every director does that. Right. They all have influences. I don't understand why when he has influences, everybody acts like he's, like, not creative. It's how you use these influences and put your own stamp on it. Oh, it's prejudice. Absolutely. I I agree. I mean, I thought that Us was so unique. Mm -hmm. So unique. He took a lot. He he pretty much took your expectations of a horror movie and kind of threw them out the window, but still gave you the essence of what's horror. I mean, the only thing I could really compare it to is like a slasher film, but even the rules of like a slasher film aren't there. Yeah. There is no downtime. Well, there is I think, no safe moment for them, really. And you the, never, like, you, you just didn't know. A lot of time in the slasher film, you get an explanation of what's happening. Why is this person coming back to life again? Or how is mm-hmm. he coming back to life again? Or it's a supernatural power. Or no, there's no supernatural power. Mm-hmm. He's possessed with us. It's just, this is the story. Accept mm-hmm. it for what it is. Yep. I don't have to tell you exactly what happened or why it happened we don't we're never really told why there's duplicates of them no are we yeah no it's just they're just they're just art she just says i I guess like she's i think she says something like i guess a a human did this but we don't know when it started so it's like that's the only explanation you get so is this like something based in the realm of we all have a duplicate somewhere on the planet. Well, that's like a pretty old, like you know, trope. It's just like the the evil version of you, like you know, Spock's right. got the little fucking <laughs> evil Spock has a little beard and shit. Like the, it's yeah. like a pretty old trope, mm-hmm. you know, that there's like evil opposite version, mirror version of you. But like I think, I think what makes this movie different in using that trope is that the mirror image people like are people though. Like he makes you want to empathize with them a little mm-hmm. like like in any other movie the evil person is just evil you and they try to kill you at the end like but then yeah, this movie yeah. like evil are they evil because they're evil or are they evil because they've been subjugated and right. now they're fighting back like like if you you know right when when 
they're all the families in the house and then the tethered uh people come their opposites uh their you know their clones or whatever like she sits them down and is like look you know i've had a shit life every time you had something good i had to eat shit you know mm-hmm. yeah. and, and, and and for what like they didn't deserve to be treated like that they just were they were just born underground or however they're made mm-hmm. like they were put into a situation that they didn't deserve and then she's like so you're thinking like well they kind of have motivation for the way they are which is like more than a, another movie i guess would give uh a monster like that or like yeah yeah a threat i guess mm-hmm. they just exist yes and mm-hmm. I kind of like that, right? you know, because I, I like letting my mind wander mm-hmm. a little bit and think about things instead of just being like, oh, this is why, this is how. Instead, he just kind of put it out there. Like, yeah, they're like exact physical duplicates. Yeah. I think he actually explained it a little too much I uh, in the third act. I think he should have been even more ambiguous with it. Because if you give the, the little bit he tried to have her explain it at the end, just makes people want to like, well, how do the rabbits eat? And what did you know? Did right, they right. like think too much into yeah. it, you know? Which like, I don't know. I guess I, I almost I wish he would have just not explained them at all and just had the tether be downer and not have any explanation for them at all and I just can see that yeah. and just be there. So if there's none, then everybody can be like, oh, make up their own mm-hmm. thing. But if you give a little bit, then people want to go that that makes them want to go the extra mile to like put all the pieces together and they don't fit all together because if you like sit down and really just like hash out the tethered and like how they operate like it doesn't make sense if you just sit down with it like and pick it apart but it's not meant to be seen like that it's like a thematic thing it's not Mm -hmm. supposed to be like literal i guess it's just meant to scare the shit out of you yeah yeah and it does because the unknown is scarier than the known of course and and that touches on something else I liked about it because you can look at it and try to kind of be like, what what does he mean? Like, what's he talking about? We have doubles. There's this underground, and you know these people don't really have like free will. Like, what's he talking about? And there's a lot of things that you can like kind of discuss and analyze. Mm-hmm. But if you don't want to, you can just like watch it and just like be scared shitless. Yeah, and just ex- experience it. And that's like to me, that's like the best art. You, the the way the ones that you can just do either one with yeah and i think everybody after get out they were expecting him to he became the social uh commentary horror guy which i don't he made one movie like that's the one movie that's what that happened to be about and then so like he kind of got typecast everybody's like oh he makes the social movie. right and then he's on the twilight zone yeah too mm-hmm. yeah but know. when honestly he's just peel just makes movies i don't think I don't think he necessarily is like always trying to make a political statement. And I think you can read right. us like one kind of, mm-hmm. but not as much racially. I don't think it's more like class structure yeah. to me, mm-hmm. like low class, high class and, and, you know, capitalism and all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. You can like read it that way. But I think I what I do like is that he makes movies and puts black people in the movie, but it doesn't have to be about them being black. It's mm-hmm. just it's just diverse Mm -hmm. like every movie that has a black person in it doesn't need to be about the black struggle and all that like it it can be like get out absolutely was about Mm -hmm. that like 100 percent is like that's why he made it but you know us is more like he just has black people in a horror movie but they have all these different variety of roles that they can play now well they're not shoved into these tropes he just has black people in his movie like Mm -hmm. i just looked at the movie as this is a family Mm mm-hmm on vacation. Yep. And he's excited right. that he got this cheap ass boat. You yeah. know, like I mean yeah. they're just enjoying themselves on vacation. It mm-hmm. had nothing to do with them being yeah. a black family. They're like a upper middle class family yeah. going on vacation mm-hmm. and going to the beach. Mm-hmm. You know? I think Yeah. That's what I like about it. I like that that he just makes movies with black people in them, but that doesn't necessarily have to be like about the about blackness itself. You know, and I I know he caught a lot of heat because he said he was going to he said he wasn't going to make movies with a white protagonist. Is that what he says? He said something. He said he would not. He doesn't see himself casting a white male lead in one of his movies. All right. So, you know, everybody <laughs> pooped their pants about yeah, that. Yeah, we got enough. Yeah. But yeah. No Just one's going to lose movie. out. Like. The, enough space the pushback he gets like in the horror community just blows my mind like i i'm in a lot of horror groups and stuff and 
anytime he comes up, it's like instant hate on him. I don't, I don't, I just don't understand it. Like I at don't all. either. I don't. I mean, yeah. They're so they're so scared of like different voices in horror, like different people making movies. Like, let a black guy make horror about black people. What's the big damn deal? You have like nine hundred movies about white people in horror. Like, let a almost woman every make them... one, yeah. almost every single one. I know. That's why it's just so shocking to me that it's like, what are you threatened by? It's like they're so threatened. Though. <laughs> they're no so one's gonna upset. take your <laughs> favorite movie away from you. Like, like no God. one's taking anything away. No, by they're adding. adding. Yeah, I know. Well, you know, I for one. I like that we're getting this more cultured aspect mm-hmm. to horror. I think it's great. Let's make a horror movie about a gay family. Mm-hmm. Two dads, yeah. two moms, whatever. We've never had that. What's the big deal? Right. Like literally it's a mom and a dad and their two kids going on vacation yeah. and all hell breaks loose. Mm-hmm. Not a big deal at all. No, yeah. and at like all. I Get think over it, the horror fans are pretty diverse. So it's yeah. like you want to yeah. see yourself, mm-hmm. you know, you like a reflection of your own self yeah. in this story. Yeah. I don't understand. And people were melting down. Yeah. Like, oh, he's he's racist. Yeah. I was what? like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and also, like, he had white people in his movies. Like, there's a whole white family in us. Mm-hmm. Right. And, you know, and it's never made like a thing like they're white or anything. They're just friends are white like well and he's married to a white woman too, yeah so uh, I'm pretty sure he's i think we can too. throw that yeah, one his, out his mother is white yeah yeah so he's you know i mean I th- the white characters were like kind of a little bit like of uh like a com- like comedy i guess effect mm-hmm. but i mean the whole, comic movie, relief. the whole movie everyone was comic relief at one point everyone had their lines and everything yeah um I think they were a little douchey and like acted pretty stereotypically white, but yeah. it's like, that's funny. And that's, it's okay. It is okay. You know, I always say this to people and sometimes I get the eye, but stereotypes exist for a reason. Mm-hmm. And that reason is they actually exist. They do. Well, it's like, they actually do exist. It's an easy way to, you know, write something and mm-hmm. to just kind of have it be what it is. I, I don't have a problem with it. I mean, I <clears throat> they were they were f- fun to laugh at. Yeah. I didn't feel as bad when they got killed, which is something that I think is important when I watch a horror movie. If I'm going to be watching, you know, a bunch of you know really brutal, violent murders, yeah, I don't want to have all this like you know, three-dimensional character development and, you know, relationship building. And then all of a sudden I'm, like, watching them be brutalized. I'd rather them be, like, douchey stereotypes who that I don't to care about. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You like, deserve what just She's, like, you. you know, being like, oh, I got plastic surgery. Oh, yeah. not like you need any. And it's mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Black Bitch. don't crack. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> I'm 100. <laughs> I'm 137 years old. But can we talk about like Tim Heidecker and like he's like really good in this? Yeah, he, he needs is. to see yeah, more horror movies. He was like so good in it. I was like, what the hell? They were all good. Yeah, every 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 person. I think that happens a lot though when you put an actor that's typically doing comedy or drama, and then you translate them into or transpose them into a different type of film. Usually they stand out like that. Yeah. Because number one, mm-hmm. you're not used to seeing it, mm-hmm. but then they can put that comedic talent. I mean, because mm-hmm. his role in this, even though it was terrifying, yeah, it was I <laughs> loaded with humor. I'm not yeah. like I'm not a. I know about Tim and Eric, but I'm not like a huge fan. I didn't realize it was him until afterwards. My husband yeah. told me, and I was like, oh, that was like that was that yeah. guy. Oh, he was great. He was great. Yeah, Lupita was absolutely fantastic. Yeah, she was. I've never like really thought of her as like menacing. Like as a menacing persona, yeah, and she's so perfect as like, like uh, red, and that voice oh, that she did. I was creepy. like, what the hell? Is this it, like everything about this movie is just so slightly off that, it, like everything's off putting all the time. Mm-hmm. Just people don't act right. Everything they say sounds weird. Why do you think her voice was like that? I, yeah, I don't know. Cause she, yeah, that was weird. I was trying to figure that out too. I'm not sure because it seemed like everyone else didn't talk because yeah. the the uh I forgot what the like uh bottom guys uh, her husband what mm-hmm. his name was but he would just grunt mm-hmm. 
And I think so did the the uh, the Appleganger of Tim too. They just grunted. I don't or, think like, anybody yelled. talked. But she did because she was obviously yeah. Maybe it was just a grunty voice from. Maybe she didn't really talk a lot. Yeah, maybe sometimes she didn't when you talk don't all, use your yeah. voice, if she has nobody to talk to when she's true. underground, if she has nobody to really communicate with other than grunts, your voice is going to sound untrained and mm-hmm. terrifying yeah. when you come yeah. out. Yeah. And she's been there since she was a child. Yeah, because yeah. how old do you think she was then? Like five, maybe? Yeah. She was really I little. think five. Yeah. I think five. What a cute little so, kid, though, too. Yeah, yeah she was. She's she was really cute. The kids in this movie. They were the great. The kids were in this great. movie were fantastic. The, mm-hmm. the girl, the teenage girl, loved her. Mm-hmm. She really stole the show for me. And especially as her, uh, as her, what are they, what are they called? Uh, I want to call them like Morlocks. Oh, like the, from the tethered. Time machine. The tethered. Okay. Her, I was totally thinking about Morlocks too, though. I was like, damn, Storm down there or something? <laughs> <laughs> They're totally Morlocks. He's probably thinking about that. He's a nerd. Jordan Peele's and he's probably thinking that. Well, I, I especially thought too, like you for you couldn't tell like who they were, or what they looked like at first yeah. when they were crowding around the house, and then like they were like shooting by in the window, and the 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 boy came by with his mask on, mm-hmm. and it was like the white mask with like darkened eyes, yeah. and I like thought for a second that's what that was, mm-hmm. like he didn't have a mask on, like yeah. he had some like super pale face, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh. Wow. Okay, but then I noticed that he had the mask on, so I thought that was maybe a reference too. And the, the, other, li- and the little kid was called Pluto, I think. I think so. The other thing I did notice about this movie too is Get Out had a few kind of violent moments towards the end, but this movie he really amped up mm-hmm. the amount of violence. It was way. More yeah. than mm-hmm. anything. Oh, well, I forgot. You didn't see Get Out yet. So, but yeah, it's way. There's a lot more violence in this mm-hmm. than the last one. But also, I think you know, there's like a lot of like surreal kind of like dream logic stuff going on, and that's in Get Out, but like a little bit. And I feel like he kind of like started leaning into this more artsy kind of uh, aesthetic, and like I don't know, like I was really. I think Get Out is better as a better movie. It's like tighter. Uh, it's the got way better script. It's just, the narrative is tighter. I think because he was working on it forever. Like you could tell, like he worked on Get Out for. I think he said he worked on it for ten years or something. Wow. So I mean, it's like an airtight script. Like it, that movie's like just pitch perfect every second, every foreshadowing, all the all the all the uh, imagery, all the symbolism was like just on every second mm-hmm. of that movie. Like, this movie is a lot messier to me, um, a little less focused, but I like that it's ambitious, and I like that he did something different, and I like that he didn't, that he didn't feel like he had to be, like, pigeonholed into making certain types of movies, you know? Mm-hmm. And I also hope he doesn't always make horror movies, too. I hope he doesn't get, like, typecast as being the horror guy. I'd like to see him, you know, branch out and try other things, because I really like his voice. I like, I like his style it's interesting yeah. you know different even like- though he uses iconography that we recognize he remixes it like i got five on it like that song for one mm-hmm. so he took some <laughs> some old hip-hop song i think that came out in like mid 90s maybe late 90s yeah i think late 90s so he takes you know i got five on it and he made it into like this symphonic horror like yeah thing and it was amazing yeah i know it was cool. that whole part i was like wow like like that's what he does he takes these things that he liked as a you know younger person and he like remixes them and and weaves them into like these new you know forms yeah there's a lot of stuff going on i mean even the fact that um the the boys wearing the jaw shirt through the whole movie um the black flag shirts that keep showing up yeah. because they have the like uh whatever that what was that uh 11 11 yeah 11 11 i couldn't that's funny because i was like what does that mean what does that mean and that's something my husband figured out too. He was like, "Well, the eleven eleven and I was like, "Oh, <laughs> oh yeah." But there was also some foreshadowing. I noticed um, I, the first thing that pops off the top of my head is uh, the ambulance, where he would uh, wedge it in between the door, but then they got away in the ambulance in the mm-hmm. end. Kind of foreshadowing that. I, I I gotta see it again. The second that they you know revealed the twist, I was like, if I was at home, I would just be rewinding. I'd be like, <laughs> we got to start this over. So I can't wait to see it again. 
those are the best movies, though. The mm-hmm. ones that you are like, hmm, I need to see this again, and then I got to watch it again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because, like, this will be a day one Blu-ray purchase for me. I will watch it I that I night. I'm kind of interested to see what kind of special features are on there, too. Oh, that'll be fun. <clears throat> this is a, this is a uh, probably um, a soundtrack I would buy too. Yeah, if they soundtrack released the was score great. The soundtrack. I was trying to find like just on YouTube so I could listen to it more. Like the symphonic, I got five on it. Oh, mm-hmm. isn't there five family members? No, four. Oh, there's a four. four. Oh, okay. Well, what was that? Yeah. I was like, dang. One, yeah, it was just the mom and dad though. <laughs> yeah. Those little kids though, when they go in attack mode. Like, I mean, the whole th- any time mm-hmm. the actual violence is taking place, it is so fucking brutal. Yeah, it's visceral. It's good. Like yep. when they're at their friend's house. Yeah. And shit starts going off the wall. Yep. I mean, that's like it just straight up old school gory mm-hmm. horror, which is. She's got the fire poker. Oh, yeah. yeah. I love that. She's got that for a while, too, yep. doesn't she? And I love when she's like, I'm driving. She's like, I have the highest kill count yeah. in the family. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, as uh, we saw it with like a really rowdy audience, and I know people don't like that, but it was so fun. Like everybody was super into it, yeah, and just yelling and shit. And like I was like, "That's what that's what movies are for." For I agree. people fucking excited about stuff. Yeah, to yeah. go and get into them. I yeah. would like to see it though with without the rowdy yeah. crowd. The cr- this crowd so, was fucking rowdy. Yeah, they were yelling and screaming. It was and, awesome. <laughs> yeah, it made it fun to when me. When I saw it, there was a rowdy crowd too. Yeah. Everyone was laughing and screaming yeah. too, and like shouting stuff out, and it was fun. So you saw it this weekend? Yeah. Was there still a decent crowd there for it? Um, it wasn't sold out, but I mean, it was. There were people there. That's awesome. Yeah. Because you would think this would have died out a lot. It's like what three or four weeks ago it came out. Yeah, Peel's got a lot of clout though. Now he like after he won that Oscar, and he's got a lot of mm-hmm. pull. You know, which is good. I, I like that he, that, you know, that's the, that's the way he's going. So what do we think the whole meaning of the Hands Across America thing was? Do you think just? Well, they show it in the beginning of the movie, the Hands Across America, like, commercial. Yeah. And then, so the Hands Across America was back in the 80s. They, uh, it was a fundraiser to stop poverty. Right. So the I, the imagery of the people holding the hands to stop poverty. So basically, like the tethered or the poor people, like they're like the lower class people. You're right. So like it's kind of like interesting, like the tethered, mi- the tethered mirror what's going on on the surface, right? Mm-hmm. So they're doing the same actions as the people on the surface, but they're not getting any of the benefits. Just like there's people in real life that uh, do their their class uh, situation like there's people that work 40 hours a week at McDonald's and there's people that work 40 hours a week somewhere else and they're doing work they're both Mm -hmm. doing 40 hours of work but one person like can barely eat every week and the other person's got a lot Mm -hmm. which is capitalism in a nutshell right yeah Mm -hmm. so the the tethered like that's why they have the scissors and stuff so like they want to cut themselves away they want to be their own people they want to do their own thing so that's like the hands across America is like the tethered are basically represent poor people or, or lower class people. Mm-hmm. That's how I got what I got yeah, from it. That makes sense. Yeah. There were a lot of them, though. Yeah. Well, everybody. Yeah. I mean, yeah. theoretically, everybody has a tethered. Right. And in the beginning of the movie, they talk about like there's all these underground uh, like sewers oh, and stuff, scary. like just infinite that's amount. Scary. Yeah. <laughs> So it really exists. So when they, I like oh when they God. come out and everybody's dead because all the tethered came up and everybody has a tethered. Mm-hmm. So everybody does. So like basically, there's like an inverted Earth. Like there's like an Earth underneath the ground where just everybody has tethers. And then she's the first, and ob- and the only reason the tethered even coming up is because somebody that wasn't a tethered got stolen and switched and put down, and that's why she's the leader. It's not because she's like you know cares really she just cares right. about herself i mean i mean yeah it, was, it sucks what happened to her but that's what like blows my mind the most about like them being swapped was like it makes the entire time you've been rooting for the wrong person the whole fucking movie yeah yeah that that's what's yeah. great about that that twist is that the protagonist you've been rooting for her but you know she's the one that's shitty and switched them 
But yeah. is she shitty for switching? I know up? that's the thing. Is like, are you? Who should you be rooting for? It's really weird because yeah. you, because she is the one who wanted. I mean, she could have just been left behind, but she wasn't. So you feel happy for her that she got out of it. But yeah. then, but then you're like, oh, uh, the other one got left behind. Yeah, and he was kind of trapped with this. Yeah, she didn't deserve it either. It's yeah. like it's. Yeah. Well, that's the whole point. Is nobody work. deserves okay. to be right. treated like that? Exactly. Okay, so now I get the vo- see thinking about this in context. Now I get the voice thing even more. Nobody down there talks. They don't really have a way to speak. Mm-hmm. But she was from up there, mm-hmm. got swapped, so she talked before she ever even got down there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the reason, number one, she's the only one that talks. Mm-hmm. But then she's not using it because she's probably afraid. Yeah. She probably doesn't want to use her voice mm-hmm. in front of these people yeah. because they might freak out and be like, hey, yeah, she like uh, infiltrated us. Well, they well, she ends up getting people's uh, confidence by dance. Right. Is that what she says? Yeah. That was that was why I want to watch. So it. And I was like getting so confused. So when she was dancing under. So she went. That, so wait. <laughs> so like so she was the actual good dancer. And she got taken underground. So when the girl on the top was the won all the ballet stuff, that was actually her controlling her. Yeah, I that's what's blowing my mind. I don't know. I'm confused because I was thinking like, who's the dancer? Because yeah. they said too, she's not talking. You got to get her to do something. If she's and they mentioned dance, mm-hmm. so I thought, is that? what happened like yeah. they got her to dance and then somehow that awoken something in the bat yeah it's so weird. i also think maybe some tethered can be controlled more than other tethered because it seemed like uh like the little kid and pluto uh, they established early on that pluto mirrors what he does right mm-hmm. but you know we're in reverse because it's mirror image stuff so that's why he walks him he walks him back into the mm-hmm. fire like, but you know, the other tethered don't kind of act like that. So it's like, maybe it's like, maybe you have to like, maybe you, if you know that you can control them that way, you mm-hmm. can like use that to your advantage, I guess. Yeah. The dad showed that too, because he put his glasses up and then his, his, uh, mirror guy just like touched his face. Oh, I caught that. That yeah. was like the first thing I was like, Oh, are they mirroring each other? Like this is, that's when I first put that together. But yeah. And then he puts his glasses on. Yeah. Oh, and I felt so bad. He kept hitting him in the leg with that uh, bat. Yeah. I was like feeling that. (laughs) Ow, ow. And he grabs it and yanks it. In the beginning, Kyle told me about this one. He said that uh, one of the kids was eating Fruit Loops with no milk, like uh, Rose does. Yeah, yeah. In Get Out. I just thought that was a funny little little Little, Easter egg. Little duplicate stuff going on. Yeah, this... I need to watch this like 10 more times now. Totally. Because there Easy. is always going to be little things you're mm-hmm. going to pick out mm-hmm. in this. Absolutely. I mean, I think I think a lot of people that so like get out so tightly woven together and like it's it's also very straightforward. Once you know get out what it's about when you rewatch it, you're like, oh yeah, this leads to this, leads to this, leads to this. Us doesn't do that. And I think a lot of people don't like that in their movies. They like to be told what every single thing means. Yeah. They don't like ambiguity. They don't like having the fill in blanks. And I think that's why I, people maybe didn't react as positively to us as they did to Get Out because they were expecting more of the same and straight narrative. Yeah. Just and a story. You might be right. You might be right. And us is think very so. little. It's t- it's teetering on art housey a little bit. Like, oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's very subversive too. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. It doesn't just say, "Okay, this is exactly what's going on right now," and explain everything to you. Yeah. From like the first frames, mm-hmm. you're kind of you do got no training wheels. You're just yeah. off. Which I loved. Like I was like engrossed right away, and like I think within the first five minutes, I was like, "Okay, I like this movie." That was all I needed. I knew I was like, no matter how this ends, I I'm gonna like this movie. It is funny though, too, when you look on like social media, Facebook, Instagram, blah 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 blah, any kind of message board, Reddit, how divisive this mm-hmm. has been. Yeah, this is like this the the last Jedi of <laughs> horror movies. Yeah, 
people are like, oh, I fucked that movie. I hate that movie. Mm-hmm. That was the worst ever. And then you've got people like us who are like, no, I really, really enjoyed it because it wasn't straight laced. Yeah. I mean, it's got flaws to it. I I feel like the internet kind of is too binary now with opinions on things. Like, it's either the worst thing that's ever happened, like worse than Hitler, mm-hmm. or it's the greatest thing that's ever been invented in the history of movies. So, like, there's <laughs> there's no in between yeah. of criticism where you're like, hey, a lot of this, a lot of these things worked, and I liked it, and I or I even loved it. But here's I have some issues with mm-hmm. some of it because yeah. I think I think there are issues with us. I think I think it's paced weird. I think the second act's way 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 too long. And and I feel like the third act also goes on a little bit too long. Um, I honestly think you could trim probably like twenty minutes off that movie. Uh, I think the, I'd say fifteen. Yeah, but the humor towards the end, I think. I yes. Agree. Yeah. yeah. I, I feel like it drags on way too much yeah. at the end too. Like it, it just needs to be. Con- I, I think the second act needs to be condensed a little bit. But you know, I can say these things and still say I love that movie because I right. do. You know, like you can love something and like point out it has issues, but people online. Like, they don't know how to do that anymore. They don't know how to say, I like a thing, but here are things I didn't like. But overall, I still liked it. Now, it's like, if you love something, you have to have, like, literally no negative criticism on it I whatsoever. Yeah. Or you don't apparently like it, you know. So, I I feel, I wish people would be a little bit more nuanced when they're critiquing something, you know. And not mm-hmm. just be, like, binary, it's shit, or, like, fucking Jesus, you know, Tea back my yeah. face. Which <laughs> is what you know. There's like there's like an in between here. Jesus we... tea bag my face with <laughs> Jordan peels us. That's gonna be our new rating system. It's gonna be just a big pile of poop and Jesus tea bagging my face. So yeah. that's really, that's <laughs> tea bag, no tea bag. This is that's what Rotten Tomatoes <laughs> should change it to. Tea bag, no tea bag. Tea bag, no tea bag. <laughs> wow, I, I had like one more point to make, but just the the thought of the Jesus tea bag totally wiped my mind clean. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus has got something to show to your face. Uh, oh boy, I wish I could remember what I was gonna say. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I messed okay. up everything. I'm sorry. It's okay. it's worth I was trying to think you of the two silliest bag. things like to use for ratings. <laughs> <laughs> tea bag, no tea bag. Okay, I remember what I was gonna say. I was, I was honestly so in like awe of it and like just experiencing it that I don't even know if there is like. I'm sure if I watched it again, I might be like, yeah, there's problems here, there, whatever. But when as I was watching it, I was like, I was like, honestly, this doesn't happen to me like ever. But I was legit scared sitting yeah. there, so I wasn't like thinking like. Oh, this isn't working or this is working. Yeah. I mean, as far as like it being horror, it worked. For sure. Well, and I think for us, I mean, I'll be honest, we watch, I mean, the three of us and a lot of people from the site, Scott, Andrea, Tasha, we mm-hmm. watch a lot of horror movies. Mm-hmm. So we get dragged through the mud mm-hmm with a lot of shit especially those screeners you don't have to watch yeah. you don't watch them that much so yeah, thank god uh <laughs> yes i used to though some of those horror screeners they're hard to get through so when you see something that's exciting or different like us that doesn't just take all the standard tropes and throw them in your face repeatedly mm-hmm. it is kind of refreshing and kind of nice yeah. it stands out and you're like oh mm-hmm. somebody actually thought of something new yeah Mm-hmm. finally that's why you get a lot of those movies where the critic score is high and the audience score is low because critics are like oh my god something new i've just like because critics watch like fucking hundreds of movies every year mm-hmm. you know and and i'm not trying to cite anybody on anything i'm just saying what how it is critics watch more movies than normal moviegoers so a critics watched 100 movies this year mm-hmm. and uh you know average moviegoers seen like five right Right. So, like, you know, 100 guys, like, Jesus, I've seen this thing, like, 4,000 times right. before, you know, so he's, like, over it, you know, and the guy has seen five movies, is like, oh, well, this is new to mm-hmm. me, you know? Right. Mm-hmm. Or, or, you know, if it's too different, then they, they feel like they wasted their money. That's another thing. I think people sometimes that, that don't have movies as, like, a super huge hobby, they just go to movies for escapism. They want things to go a certain way. Right. They want to be, they want, they, it's expensive to go to the movies. It's like 15 bucks. You know, if you get popcorn, you can get like $20. So you sit down at your popcorn and you want to be thrilled and chilled and, and romanced and the good guy wins at the end. Yay. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. that's what you want if you go to movies for escapism. And then if you go to a, a weird art house movie where it's sad and, 
everybody dies and it's depressing and it's weird and arty and like all out of order and you have to like think really hard about it and it's like too much shit then you're like I wasted twenty dollars and then you're like fucking yeah and then they go yeah. home and give it that they thumbs the, down they give mm-hmm. the doo-doo mm-hmm. so i think that's just kind of like what happened with us like people some people were expecting something a little straightforward and then they didn't get it and then they were like kind of like I don't know. They just felt cheated, maybe, or they just were like, "What the heck is this stuff?" You know? Yeah. I mean, it still did really well. It was like the biggest horror opening yeah. of all time, which I guess doesn't really qualify anything because people were going to see it no matter what. Right. But it did have pretty good early reactions mm-hmm. across the board. It didn't have really bad early reviews either. Yeah. But again, that comes into that whole critical mindset versus yeah. just going for fun thing. I mean, critics like are people too. Like, like all of us, we're just yeah. regular people. That we just watch a lot of movies. That's the only mm-hmm. difference. We just watch more mm-hmm. movies. But you know, so if I when I watched us, like I wasn't sitting there the whole time just like picking it apart. Like when I watch movies, normally I don't do that unless the movie's really bad. If I start wand- my mind starts wandering because the movie's bad, then I'll start picking shit apart. Mm-hmm. But us, I never felt like that. The whole time I was watching, mm-hmm. I was just like, oh. And then when I sat down to write my view, then I started thinking back, like, oh, this, this, this. But mm-hmm. I didn't think that while I was watching it. So that's always a sign of a, at least an entertaining or, yeah. you know, intriguing movie is if I'm not picking it apart while I'm watching it because mm-hmm. it's, I don't have time to, my brain's too much, too into like what's going on, you know? Mm-hmm. And this is exactly why I stopped taking a notepad to movies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause when I first started writing reviews, if I was going to a screening or whatnot, I would take a little notepad with me and jot stuff down. I stopped doing that because I found that I was picking the movie apart as I was watching it. Yeah, I was yeah. taking notes. I'd rather just watch the entire thing. And then on the ride home or for the next couple of days, kind of stew on it yeah. before taking a dump on something. Yeah. Well, right. that's how I like to do it. I like to get to just the full blast of the movie, like the full feel. Just get I, as the guy intended. I mean, when they make a movie, they don't make a movie intended for you to sit there and take notes while you're watching right. it. They want you to lose yourself inside the mm-hmm. movie and experience what they made. And then afterwards you know you can kind of mull over it yeah but yeah i see there's some people i know that they some critics they they note take and i'm like huh how how you do that i used to do that like when i was in school i would do that when i was watching movies for class i would you know i'd get nervous because i'd be like this is for a grade you know i gotta do this and and then i would get like totally lost in my note taking and i'd write weird things and i'd be like what the hell does this mean and (laughs) i you know when you abandon it you you come up with more like better things to say i think i think it's easier to get like a thematic reading of a movie if you don't take notes yeah which is how i like to review films i like to i like to i'm less i'm less on the technical aspects of movies and more like what was the director trying to say to me like with this movie like what was his intent and was his intent successful like the technical stuff like you know you can always tell, like, <laughs> film students and stuff, like, they're like, he used this type of camera, and, was, <laughs> and I didn't like the lighting in scene seven, and, you know, it's like, okay, but, you know, I could nitpick that shit all day, so who cares about that? I want the context of the story Yeah, but how did the how movie make it feel, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. like, how did it, how did, like, the director's vision come out to me? Like, that's what I want. Mm-hmm. That's why, and that's why I read in other reviews. I like to read reviews of people that are like dissecting what the movie meant and like stuff. I I, I don't really like highly technical uh, pick apart reviews. You know, those aren't those don't don't tell you anything. Yeah, if you want to know if you should watch a movie, yeah, it doesn't tell you anything. Yeah, because most nine out of ten people don't notice that anyway. Right. You know, and even if they do, it usually doesn't impede anything. They're just like, oh, yeah. You know? If you want to read a really good review, read my review of Hellboy. <laughs> man, that movie's getting pooped on really Oh, bad. man. Mm. It's so bad. It's so bad. I'm going to get a big beer at the theater and go see it. Like, on a cheap day when it's like $5. Yeah, it was terrible. It was absolutely terrible. I was sad because I like Hellboy. So, but this I'm hoping kinda... it has at least trash, like, uh, enjoyment. No. It doesn't. <laughs> it really doesn't. Like Venom had trash enjoyment to me. Everybody yeah. hated Venom, but like Venom has such a fun performance in it. Like I was like, eh. a lot of people really liked Venom though too. Yeah, Venom got really bad reviews, but I thought it was kind of fun to be honest. I didn't like it at all, but I will buy the Blu-ray at some point and watch it again. Like when it's like 
four ninety nine yeah. family video or something. That's why I get everything. Yeah, too. but my point was, you know, like Get Out is the kind of movie you can like sit there and stew on. Hellboy, it was just total shit. Yeah, there's no thinking involved. It was just grand poop. And even <laughs> movies like you know, people will say you gotta turn your brain off but i feel like there's Mm -mm. even a successful way to make a turn your brain off movie that's still like good yeah like i don't mean like turn your brain off like literally nothing matters in the whole movie and you shouldn't care like i'm trying to think like tucker and dale yeah it's a great example it's Have like, you seen Tucker and Dale versus Evil? No. Oh man, you'd like that movie. Oh, you, you know, would. I love just got that. recommended that movie the other day. Yeah, by a friend. But yeah. that that's a good turn your brain off movie, and you can enjoy all, all the satire and yeah. comedy, and it's really smart. The comedy mm-hmm. in this movie, mm-hmm. the way it just spins all the horror tropes. Mm-hmm. So yeah, and us kind of does that too. It's not really that funny. I mean, it is in parts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's a very smart film. I think it makes it scarier when parts are funny. Like, there's just really good contrast. Like, Peel's so good at, at, like, weaving comedy in the horror. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to do right. And he does it in this movie. I think it makes it more scary because you're, uh, like, you're relating more to these these people. And it's making it more realistic because people do say funny things Mm -hmm. in situations. Or, and some people, like, don't lose their sense of humor they might even get like more goofy in a situation like that because they're trying to deal with it so yeah oh yeah when i get stressed if i had that shit going on i would just be making jokes the entire time like sick jokes i mean there's the whole like the freudian joke you know the story about the guys in war and like the uh guy gets blown away and the like corpse is laying there and they just keep like making jokes about the corpse the whole time and it's like they get out of war and they're like yeah that was sick that we did that but like we had to so we wouldn't go insane dealing with that like yeah horrible thing so it works and I, I mean, I, I kind of went back and revisited uh, Key and Peele because I, I loved that show when it was on. Did did either of you, both of you, watch I it? I did not yeah. really watch it. Yeah, I used to watch it. Um, and one of the things I had noted when it was on is how many of the skits are like actually like horrific and yes. like really, really fucking violent. Yes. And so when I had heard that he was, you know, had done a thriller and then a horror movie, I was like, well, he's going to do a good job on this. It's going to work. And it did. It had that very similar sensibility of the, you know, being creepy, but, you know, having it be, have a sense of humor and have his, his personality. It really came through. Honestly, I think maybe this is a bad comparison, but between these two movies, I think the director I compare him the most to, and I know we don't really like to make a lot of comparisons, but really it is very, and and I hate that, oh, he's the next this, he's the next Mm -hmm. that, Mm -hmm. but very reminiscent of Spielberg because Spielberg can do so many different things, and this guy is doing it. Like, he's doing The Twilight Zone, but he's doing, he had a comedy Mm -hmm. show, and then he did Get Out, which was more of a cultural statement, and then he goes more straight-laced, weird Mm -hmm. horror with this, I think it will be interesting to see what is next. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, hopefully he doesn't do horror next. Yeah, you yeah. know, I think he could do a, a lot of different things. And, and um, it'd be interesting to see him do something like, you mentioned Spielberg, like maybe more Spielberg-ish, like about, you know, like not a horror, but maybe like a coming-of-age story about like, Straight kids sci-fi. or something. Or sci-fi would be cool too, yeah. yeah. Like any, I think I think he could do it. I really do. You can do anything, man. <laughs> and he, I think, yeah, he's just finding his voice, mm-hmm. you know, and he's uh, he's already got two, like, he has, like, one, like, I think Get Out is a straight masterpiece, to be honest. I've seen Get Out probably, like, five or six times. Yeah, me too. It's absolutely fucking airtight masterpiece movie, and and anyway, in his sophomore effort, was still pretty dang good, and it was ambitious, which I liked, and it was, you know, it was weird and interesting and intriguing, so, you know, I feel like he's got a good road ahead of him. And interestingly enough, like, you know, Get Out opened the doors for so many other, like, uh, people of color to, like, get stuff um, funded and, uh, like, produced. And uh, I was watching this uh, documentary called Horror Noir on Shudder, which was about uh, black horror. 
and they talked and they have like kind of a they have an interview with Jordan Peele in it and then they talked to some other actors and they were saying that people were actually changing scripts they had to from white people to black people because they wanted to like ride the get out like wow. train of like how they were like talking they were basically like dude Jordan Peele opened so many doors for black actors and black scripts it was like insane and he like has his own company I think his own production yeah. company yeah. yeah so you know like I know as I was trying to like say like oh his new movie is not as culturally significant but like just his voice is culturally significant yeah. and it's opening up doors for other people that they're like they were like oh hey a black director can be successful and right. you can make a successful uh, black led horror movie and it not be full of like tropes and stuff you know like you can just have a horror movie with black people in it and it's like and it makes money and us made money us mm-hmm. didn't bomb or anything oh so. no I mean, we did phenomenal yeah that's pretty did much all they care the about office. too if they can yeah. make money yeah so so i think that's that's just another good like windfall from peel you know breaking out with with get out is that it opens doors for other smaller people that have been trying to get shit made for years and yeah. then they couldn't because they were like oh it's too niche or whatever you know so now well and now the studios are like looking for that yes. next thing yeah what's mm-hmm. the next thing what's the next get out you know mm-hmm. indian horror it's it's, uh, it's already there i was gonna say i haven't i don't know if i've seen any Indian. yeah movies. we actually reviewed one a what few was, weeks ago what was it called uh rakash rakash interesting tasha reviewed it oh uh didn't that person make other stuff too or was it that the same one i think this was a different person oh okay yeah yeah but you know you're seeing that now horror is kind of getting into different cultures different people making Mm -hmm. it stuff like that oh yeah it goes through like like little phases too because you know early 2000s j horror was like super big because the ring and like uh all those other all those other Japanese horror movies were like storm into place, and then for a little while it was Korean horror. Mm-hmm. Then you had the f- new French extremity that was like in the mid two thousands. So it like goes, yeah. So it goes Ooh. like in all these like little cycles. So I'm hoping maybe black lead horror will be another mm-hmm. cycle that we'll go through, and we can see more of that kind of stuff. That is what we need to do. We need to do a full episode on martyrs. Man, that'd be rough. That would be hard. Do we even have people on the field? Have you seen Martyrs? No. Oh, it's dear pretty Lord. rough. <laughs> what is it? It's a French horror film. Yeah. I think I'm going to have to dig that one out for It's like night. top three most distressing movies I've ever seen. <laughs> and like, and, yeah, it and is. And I make it my business to watch distressing movies. Like, I, mm-hmm. that's what I do. And it's <laughs> like top three for me. And I've seen some shit. I've seen like any, every shitty, horrible like extreme movie you can think of i've seen it and mm-hmm. even martyrs i was like oh ooh. it pushes oh. the envelope <laughs> yeah have you seen a serbian film or no no okay we need to start her out with martyrs first <laughs> we had to prep you I, for I, the I, other one we'll talk about it later but i probably won't watch it yeah it's pretty okay. rough <laughs> I, was, I don't think we could get there's certain things i won't watch maybe yeah. andrew and there's it. no there's no what's that martyrs, martyrs. yeah jesse's seen it too yeah jesse i think scott's seen it yeah That'd be a rough one. I could talk about that movie for quite a while, though. Me too. It's a pretty interesting film. All right. How do we feel? We good yeah. with this talk? Should we wrap it up? I think we're good. Yeah. We covered I'm ready to everything. watch the movie again. And should I watch like, Get Out. I wish yeah, I should have brought it. it. So I should have brought it with me. You could have borrowed it. Dang yes. it. Oh, Get Out? Yeah. Yeah. I got to Maybe I'll watch it tonight. I don't have to be up for work until late tomorrow. Oh, I got to be up. With <laughs> 6 a.m. again. 5 a.m. Ooh, Ooh yeah, disgusting. It's terrible. All right, folks. This was episode 113 of Real Crime. We'll be back next week. <laughs> I have no idea what we're going to talk about, but we'll think of something good. It'll be fun. Yeah. And <laughs> and the really cool thing is me and Michelle will have seen Avengers Endgame. Oh, no, but you won't be here next week. So No. Did you uh, want to talk about Endgame? I don't know. Maybe we'll do that the next week. All right. Well, nobody's going to want to listen to it until it comes out. So We'll spoil that shit, yeah. everybody. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to be like, we ain't even fucking looking at this podcast. We don't even care. All right, folks. Thanks for watching. Thanks for Visit listening. We'll see you next week. www.themoviesleuth.com and find The Movie Sleuth on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and iTunes.